Let's talk about fever, technically known as pyrexia. Definition Fever implies an elevated core body temperature of more than normal range. Normal temperature is 37 degrees Celsius to 37.6 degrees Celsius, that is 98.6 degree Fahrenheit to 99.6 degree Fahrenheit. Febrile above 37.8 degree Celsius, that is 100 degree Fahrenheit. Hyperpyrexia, that is greater than 41 degree Celsius, that is greater than 106 degree Fahrenheit. Hypothermia is less than 35 degree Celsius, that is less than 95 degree Fahrenheit. Fever with relative bradycardia. It is seen in typhoid fever, meningitis, viral fever, that is influenza, brucellosis, that is an infection spread from animal to people mostly by unpasteurized dairy products, leptospirosis, that is a bacterial disease spread through the urine of infected animals, and drug-induced fever. Fever with exanthem, that is rashes. Rash appearing on first day of fever, it is seen in chickenpox. Rash appearing on fourth day of fever, it is seen in measles. Rash appearing on seventh day of fever, it is seen in typhoid. Febrile convulsions. It occurs in infants and children less than 5 years old. Convulsions are common at temperature more than 40 degrees Celsius, that is 104 degree Fahrenheit. Let's see the patterns of fever. First, continuous fever. The temperature remains elevated above normal without touching the baseline and the fluctuation does not exceed 0.6 degree Celsius that is 1 degree Fahrenheit. It is seen in low bar pneumonia, infective endocarditis, enteric fever. Remittent fever. The fever fluctuation exceeds 0.6 degree Celsius that is 1 degree Fahrenheit but without touching the baseline. Intermittent fever. The elevated temperature touches the baseline in between. In hectic or septic type of intermittent fever, the diurnal variation is extremely large as occur in septicemia. Quotidian fever is a hectic fever occurring daily. Relapsing fever. Febrile episodes are separated by normal temperature for more than one day. Example, Borrelia infection, red white fever. It means in relapsing fever, the gap between two episodes is more than one day. Tertial fever occurs on the first and third day. Example, Plasmodium virax, ovelli, falciparum. Quarter fever occurs on first and fourth day. Example, Plasmodium mollieri. Tail Ipsden fever is a type of fever lasting for 3 to 10 days followed by an ovibrile period of 3 to 10 days. Example, Hodgkin's and other lymphomas. Saddle back fever. Initially, fever lasts for 2 to 3 days followed by an remission lasting for 2 days and the fever reappears and continues for 2 to 3 days. Example, dengue fever. Borrelia infection and rat bite fever both are associated with the several days of fever followed by an several days of a febrile period and then the cycle repeats. Cyclic neutropenia accompanied with fever occurring every 21 days. Clinical assessment. The differential diagnosis is very broad so clinical features are used to guide the most appropriate investigations. Feeling hot or sweaty does not necessarily signify fever. Diagnosed only when a body temperature of over 38 degrees Celsius is recorded. Rigors. Shivering followed by excessive sweating occurs with a rapid rise in body temperature from any cause. Night sweats. Associated with particular infection, example TB, infective endocarditis, sweating from any cause is worse at night. Excessive sweating is seen in alcohol, anxiety, thyrotoxicosis, diabetes mellitus, acromegaly, lymphoma and excessive environmental heat all cause sweating without temperature elevation. Recurrent fever. There are various causes, example Borrelia recurrentis, bacterial abscess. Accompanying features. Severe headache and photophobia, although characteristics of meningitis, may accompany other infections. Delirium during fever is more common in young children or the elderly. Myalgia may occur with viral infections such as influenza and with sepsis, including meningococcal sepsis. Shock may accompany severe infection and sepsis. Let's take a look on investigations. If a clinical features do not suggest a specific infection, then initial investigation should include a full blood count with differential including eosinophil count, urea and electrolytes, LFTs, blood glucose and muscle enzymes, inflammatory markers, ESR, CRP, a test for antibodies to HIV-1, autoantibodies including anti-nuclear antibodies, chest x-ray, ECG, urine analysis, urine culture, blood culture, throat swab per culture or CPA, PCR, other specimen as indicated by in history and examination, example wood swab, sputum culture, stool culture, microscopy for ova and parasites and clostridium difficile toxin assay. Let's discuss management of fever. Fever and its associated systemic symptoms can be treated with paracetamol and by tapered sponging to cool the skin. Replacement of salt and water is important in patients with drenching sweat. Further management is focused on the underlying cause.